All right, good morning, everybody. Hello, 1 million cuppers. Welcome to our first virtual presentation, virtual style for the Provo chapter. Um, sorry for our little intermission there while we took a break during COVID. We're super excited to get back up and running. Uh, virtual style, this will be fun and exciting. We've got some great presenters for you today. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll have some feedback and some questions at the end. Just wanted to give you a little heads up on how our, our streaming works. There will be a little lag time. So if you have feedback, if you have any questions for David, please make sure that you put that in the chat feature and um, Peyton will be monitoring that and get that over to us to get that to David. Uh, but there is a little lag. So if you wanna get your feedback in, make sure you get it in before we wrap up at the end of the time frame here. So just uh, welcome everybody, super excited to have you. I uh, just want to go over a couple of housekeeping uh, in issues as well as uh, some announcements. It's been a while since we've met, so there's a lot happening right now. Um, we would love to thank our sponsors. Our sponsors are always a big part of helping 1MC and the 1 Million Cups community uh, really make this happen, whether it's a virtual style or we, we're in the office and we've got some great partners in that. So we really are grateful for our sponsors. We thank you for, for sticking with us. Uh, we're always looking and interested in uh, bringing more of those on as uh, supporters and organizers for the 1MC. So if you're interested in being a sponsor, an organizer, let us know and uh, we'll get you hooked up. Okay, so just a couple of announcements I wanted to make you aware of. We have our, as you know, Rev Road is uh, the venue host and lead sponsor for the 1MC Provo chapter. So we're going to throw in a couple of our announcements and then we'll get to David. We have our Rev Road Rally. We've partnered with the Orem City Summerfest. That's taking place August 12th. Look for some uh, social media posts to come out around that. Uh, August 12th, 6 to 9 p.m. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna have some really cool cars there, some really fun activities. Um, we honor some special guests in our community. Really great event. Uh, then we have our entrepreneurship competition is back on the table. So we are so excited to announce we have picked a date as it's been postponed from March with this COVID crazy, uh, September 12th is our date. Saturday, September 12th, you should have already been getting some um, notifications if you're an applicant. And if you wanna be a, a, just an attendee, start following our social media and we will get some announcements out around that. We are hoping, cross both fingers, that we will be back in the office to host 1 Million Cups in person the first Wednesday in July. So, um, Look for that to start happening. If that changes, we'll let you know, but that's our plan right now. Of course, we'll be following all of our, you know, uh, health officials, guidelines, regulations, masks, uh, whatever it is uh, that they, they let us know at that point in time that we need to, uh, to follow and, and uh, adhere by. Um, we'll be having our physical distancing, just carry a mask because that's just probably going to be um, the new norm. Just have a mask. Um, okay, then, um, the other part is we are accepting applications. We're already filling out our calendar for the next several months for presenters. We've had several that are excited and waiting to present in person. And so we're filling that calendar. If you wanna present and you have a, a particular Wednesday you wanna pick, you better get your application in and let us know and we'll get you in that spot. So um, it's already filling up. Super, super uh, excited to have uh, our presenters today. David is going to join us. He is the founder of Startup Space. David, thank you for, for joining us this morning. Super excited to hear what you're going to talk about. We're going to turn the time over to you, and you're going to give us uh, the what and how and why of the Startup Space. Absolutely. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, perfect. So let me just share my presentation really quick, and um, you should be able to see it come up in one second. So first off, let me thank you all uh, that are viewing on YouTube uh, for joining the presentation today. Uh, like I said, I'm excited to be presenting. Uh, typically, I have been presenting uh, in person, and uh, but uh, given the COVID-19 crisis, uh, I'm happy to do this virtually. Hopefully, I'll get to see all of you someday very soon. And also a special call out to the UVU BRC uh, mm -hmm. down in Orem that's uh, also on the call today. And uh, they are uh, a client of ours and have been for over a year. So we'll get to that in a second. But first, a little bit about uh, Startup Space. So I came up with this idea 
about two years ago um, when I found that it was really hard to be able to uh, find the help I need for my business. And so what I'm going to present to you today is a solution I came up with, and I would love to get your perspective on whether this would work for your small business community and would this be a useful resource uh, for them. And then also to take a look at our product and tell us if this is something that's laid out intuitively that can actually help you uh, with starting a business or restarting a business uh, after COVID-19. The link is startupspace.app um, and the, there's also a mobile app. So we would love to get your feedback uh, on that. So the, the opportunity here is that there are a lot of resources already in your community, but it's not the lack of resources that makes it a challenge to start a business. It's knowing what's available where and how can it be tailored for your need. The feedback we've gotten in the last two years from a lot of underserved entrepreneurs is that when you say an opportunity is for everyone, it's usually not for them. And so how do you find and curate and share the opportunity, be it an incubator, a fund, um, a mentorship program? How do you find the specific resource that can help you with a challenge in your community? And so we came up with this idea of a connected ecosystem and through what we call community hubs, we connect entrepreneurs to resources that already exist, but do it in a way in which you can actually find resources that are specifically for you. So thinking about the solution, we wanted to kind of find a way to provide access in real time, but then also on the back end, be able to connect the dots and help the entrepreneurship support organizations find who they're serving and therefore enable them to plug any gaps. And then ultimately to be able to tell powerful stories around the impact that the organizations are having. So to be kind of uh, a little bit more precise on who the customer is, the customer is the entrepreneurship support organization mm -hmm. that is looking to support the individual entrepreneurs. The end user of the product is the entrepreneur themselves. And so we've come up with this living, breathing community, uh, which is uh, on, on the mobile phone, on the desktop as well, partnering with local communities like the Business Resource Center at uh, Utah Valley University. We have communities like this across the US where this uh, community that people are a part of connects them to resources that the community is providing and helps them navigate all of the resources to find that one resource that can help them through the challenge that they're facing. Some of the services that you will find on this platform are a resource directory that helps you quickly find mentors, other service providers like lawyers, accountants, mm -hmm. and people that can typically help you with the challenge you're having. There's also a local community calendar. Uh, and as we go through the q and I will ask uh, uh, Peter to share their uh, link uh, on the chat that you can actually see a lot of these resources come to life uh, in, in how they support, but basically a suite of tools that an entrepreneur can just get in there, start their business, connect with resources, find uh, local people that can join with them. They can also, uh, if there are any surveys or other programs that are being launched by the community partner, they can uh, do all those activities right within the platform. And how do we make money, which is a question that typically comes up. So $8,000 a year per uh, it's uh, uh, a model that, that, we, uh, that I showed on the previous slide. And then we also work with the entire state. So neighboring um, to Utah, we work with the state of Nevada. Uh, we work uh, also further up north, we work with the state of Maine um, and then with Minnesota. And then we're looking to also start connecting the dots with the state of Utah through either the Department of Commerce or the Economic Development uh, Department to be able to provide this as a statewide resource uh, within Utah. Currently, we are um, working with the Utah Valley BRC. Uh, our journey so far, so in two years, uh, we've added about 12,000 entrepreneurs. We have 75 hubs around the world. Uh, we're in about 64 different countries. Uh, and what we found consistently is that this is a problem that exists no matter how big your community is or the type of community you are. The moment you have resources in a community, you start getting silos. And so this platform has been instrumental in breaking down silos. Even with COVID-19, uh, we've been actually able to rally 
the entire resource community together to be able to provide support um, in cities like Detroit or St. Paul, Minneapolis or Denver. The list goes on where we've been able to kind of rally uh, the city resources together to be able to offer uh, support in one place. Uh, we also uh, uh, want to talk a little bit about the powerful storytelling that comes about from having a platform like this. We have stories of clients getting uh, significant investments from JP Morgan Chase, from Google and others uh, through the storytelling and the data that comes from the platform. We are passionate about measurement. We are passionate about understanding what the ecosystem is doing. And so all of these tools come built in. And here's an example of the kind of impact your storytelling can tell you. So uh, if you look at uh, on the left-hand side, there is information about the breakdown of the startup ecosystem in Denver. And on the right-hand side, you can see the kind of support network that exists. And uh, we can share this uh, deck with you offline to kind of take a deeper dive. But in the interest of time, I'll move on. But these are kind of on-the-fly analytics that we provide for impact reporting coming directly from the platform. A little bit about our team. Uh, our team keeps growing, so this is a slide that's kind of hard to keep up date. But uh, right now, we have uh, people across the country working in local communities. So we have Mackenzie in Champaign-Urbana. We've got Lily in St. Paul, Minneapolis. We've got Angela in Detroit. We've also got teammates in Wisconsin, in North Carolina. I am personally based out of Tampa, uh, and we uh, kind of uh, keep adding resources in local communities to work directly with our, with our partners. So uh, before I stop, very quick on the ask, uh, we'd like to know, you know what feedback you have on the tools themselves. Was there something useful for your community? And uh, do you find it to be intuitive? And I'm going to end by just putting a very quick video, about a minute long, just to kind of give you the perspective of one of our clients. And then we can uh, pause and ask questions. Hi, I'm Jackie Dietrich, based in Denver, Colorado, where I'm a strategic manager of the Commons on Champa. We're a public entrepreneurship resource center and a strategic program of the Downtown Denver Partnership to drive inclusive opportunity and economic growth in our center city. We serve 10,000 entrepreneurial people per year and focus primarily on underserved entrepreneurship communities, including women and people of color. Since we opened in 2015, our team has been exploring tools to support our mission and maximize our nonprofit resources. I met David Ponraj a year ago and was immediately impressed by the Startup Space vision and their plans to build a first of its kind tool for organizations like ours that are fostering entrepreneurship ecosystems and that serve to inspire entrepreneurs and support them in developing their businesses. Now we're using Startup Space to measure engagement in our community-driven programs to track the journey of entrepreneurs across their ecosystem and ultimately to understand the return on investment in our free workspace, our education and mentorship programs. In the Startup Space, we feel we're better positioned to understand our progress in carrying out our mission and to unlock the philanthropic support we need to sustain it through the data-driven insights and the ability to demonstrate our impact that comes from using the platform. So with that, I'll stop uh, and uh, open it up for questions. Great, David, thank you so much. Great presentation, really appreciate that, um, the, that uh, gra the graph of the national and global uh, view really helped kind of see how widespread you are. That's fantastic to see. I do have a couple questions for you and just for, so everybody who's joining us um, a little bit later, we do have a lag. So if you have a question for David, make sure you get it to us in the next few seconds or else uh, the lag will be after the fact. So first question for you, David, is, uh, is the web is this a website only or do you have an app as well? Yeah, it's it's a mobile app as well. And so you can download the mobile app if you look up startup space in the app store or the Google Play Store, it's a mobile app. Okay, yeah. terrific. Uh, next question is um, feedback as well. Uh, excited to go check out the startup space app. Is there an email we can email you our feedback? Absolutely. So uh, they can get the, I can put it, I don't think I can put it in the chat here. I'll put it in the chat in the, uh, in the uh, YouTube link so people can actually uh, see it in real time. So I'll just put the, the, the feedback email uh, right in there uh, so they can actually see it right now. 
Okay, fantastic. And just for our viewer um, purposes and also those that you share this with, we'll make sure we tag David on any of the posts that we share this video uh, so that you can reach out to him through social media links as well. Next question, David, is how fast can you put a COVID resource icon on the app? It's already there. So okay. you can actually go to the app and you can. So we actually support COVID-19 resources across the U.S. So, for example, in the city of Detroit, we actually and we actually brought the entire ESO community together. They use our COVID-19 page as their page. So I'm actually going to put that link uh, for what the COVID-19 page looks like in the chat. But you can actually go to the app and under uh, the resource compass, there's a COVID-19 tag. If you click on it, you will find COVID-19 resources uh, for your community within the app. So, uh, but I'll also put the link here so they can actually see what the COVID-19 resource page looks like. Okay, that'll be helpful. Thank you. Um, so the continuation on that question also yeah. is, uh, this could unlock money that enable community to purchase. Also, is there a three-year deal? Yes. So uh, the answer to the first question, absolutely. So, you know, I just put a link to one of the COVID-19 resource pages uh, in the uh, chat so people can click on that and see what it looks like in communities. We actually build the COVID-19 page and then give it back to the community so they can share it and embed it into their websites. So you can have a COVID-19 page. We actually activated one recently for uh, Orem County. So I think even Peter can put that link for uh, the Orem County COVID-19 response page in there. We're building it out right now, but uh, uh, absolutely they can, uh, you know, if there's funding to support COVID-19, uh, that funding can be used and you can actually use the startup space platform to be able to provide COVID-19 support uh, and then use that funding to pay for that uh, resource hub. Okay, fantastic. So what was the second half of that question? One was the money and the is well they were asking if there's a three-year deal okay yeah so we typically do three-year deals but we can do one year a so few of our clients are one year the reason why we do three-year deals is most technology platforms have price protection if you lock in you know if you sign a three-year deal you get the price for the three years uh usually when it's one year if the price is a price increase you don't get protection on the price increase so we recommend uh, but we don't uh, really stop you if it's only if you are only funded for one year we can do one year we typically like to do three years 90% of our clients are on three-year deals with us. Okay, great. That's helpful. Okay, one last question for you, um, David. What can the One Million Cups community do for you? Yeah, so uh, I love the fact that I had this platform to share about uh, our work, so thank you for that. And I know Provo is uh, a hotbed for innovation, uh, so we would love to connect with the Provo community, get their feedback. Uh, probably uh, there's one app launched a day in Provo. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of expertise. I would love to kind of tap in to get uh, feedback on utility, on usefulness, et cetera, because we're still a very, very young company and we still uh, pivot, learn, improve. And, and that's why I love the One Million Cups platform because we're learning every single day, right? There's no, uh, we're not pitching the product. We're actually asking for feedback on the idea and the usefulness of it. So. Uh, offline, if you all can, you know, take a look at our uh, website, startupspace.app. Uh, there is no money to be paid. It's absolutely free. The app is free. So there's no cost to the end user to be able to download it. Download it, uh, give us some of your feedback, uh, and we'll continue to improve. And hopefully I'll be able to come and attend one of the One Million Cups in person uh, down the road in Provo. We hope so. Right now, just enjoy that. Florida weather. I'm sure it's <laughs> you know I am <laughs> a little jealous there. <laughs> All right, David, thank you so much. What a pleasure to have you. Thanks for sharing uh, what you're doing. It's really fantastic. Uh, being in the entrepreneurship space myself, I'm, I'm going to look more into this. Super excited to, uh, to maybe connect with you offline and, and talk about how we can work together through RevRoad. So thanks for being a 1 million cups pre presenter today. Um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have a little bit of a lag time as we switch over to our next presenter, but thanks again, David, have a wonderful yeah. day. Yeah. Thank you, Amy, for the opportunity. Okay. Bye. Bye. -bye.
Okay, welcome everybody. We are back. Thanks for that uh, short free, brief uh, intermission there as we brought on our next presenter. We're super excited to have Armin join us today. He's going to be talking to us about Got It Life. And Armin, we're, we're just excited to hear what you're doing with that, uh, who you are, how you're, you're growing, some of your needs. Uh, we'll let you take the stage and share your screen and we'll join you on the backside, okay? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Armin. So, should I start now, right? How can I share the screen now? Go to the bottom right where it says present now. Yeah. Can you see that? We can see it. You're good to go. Great. Um, hello, friends. Um, Thank you for your in invitation. Uh, thank you for your time. My name is Armin uh, Arustamov. I'm a CEO and founder of Got It. Got It is a mental guide in the pocket of athletes. Uh, I'm a former professional tennis player, psychologist, and um, co-founder of Tennis Academy in Florida, in Orlando. And uh, uh, we, for the six years, we accepted more than 2,000 athletes from 15 countries. And we noticed one simple problem. Uh, boy or girl uh, play on the competition very well, uh, on the practice very well. But when the competition starts, that's it. They can move normally, breathe normally, and parents and coaches cannot recognize their kid. You know? And nine from 10 tennis players lose matches only because of the mental weakness. And we decided to solve this problem. We tested 80 mental techniques with more thousand athletes. And for six months, we sold them online for around $100,000. And then we chose one from 80 uh, tested mental technique and um, developed the mobile app to, uh, to, do this, um, to do this scalable, more scalable, and for convenient to users. So the secret sauce of the selected technique is a uh, Queenie algorithm. Uh, is a Queenie algorithm allows to talking with yourself like with another person. Uh, this uh, selected uh, mental technique is uh, was one of the most requested technique from AT testing. So how it works? It's like a role changing game where uh, athlete uh, communicate with oneself from mentor role and then from mentor role, and then he can uh, listen to this internal dialogue from third observer role. This is, and this uh, allows uh, athletes to distance from their destructive emotions and thoughts and achieve mindfulness and mental toughness and uh, achieve uh, insights which they didn't get before. So uh, we launched our application in the end of June on this month and we're going to sell this through five day trial period. And then we're going to charge $69.99 per year. And also athletes can buy personal mental support for mental coach, uh, with mental coach. Uh, our mindfulness market uh, is growing so fast, uh, as you see in uh, 5 billion in the world and 2 billion in the United States. The leaders of mindfulness market are Headspace and Calm. And, but we doing with, uh, uh, we don't use the meditation. We're doing them as you, as, you, as you hear another way. So, and we're going to start from tennis players, especially from tennis players, because uh, as an official statistic, there is some enough amount of tennis players in the world and in the United States. So our go-to-market strategy is pretty simple. We're going to start from tennis coaches and uh, tennis academies in the US and in the Europe. Then we're going to uh, work with uh, tennis organizations. And then in the end of this year, we're going to work with esports and uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu organizations, which, uh, which we get the requests already from. Our competitors work with uh, athletes like a YouTube channel. They give some video or audio uh, lessons without any interaction with that. And nobody does internal dialogue uh, as we do. 
with daily interaction with that. Uh, you can see our plan on this year. Uh, we understand that it's so unpredictable uh, time, but anyway, we have to do the plan. Um, you can see our uh, planned growth in the yellow squares, growth of users. And um, in June, we're going to launch MAP. In July and August, we're going to raise money for, uh, global, for, for uh, marketing and for uh, application development. In, uh, in the fall, we're going to extend the application functionality and keep uh, attracting the users. And in the next of the year, we're going to attract uh, esports and martial arts organizations, athletes. I told about myself already. Uh, so also we have a great team of Russian IT developers and marketers. They're damn crazy competent and not so expensive for us. So we are a Silicon Valley startup and we were selected from more 400 companies into Founder Institute Silicon Valley Accelerator Program. And we survived among more 30 companies during three and a half months and hit the eight graduates of winter cohort 2020. So in Silicon Valley, we, we, we got in Silicon Valley uh, great feedback and uh, advices and also great networking, which I hope we'll, we will use it in our way. Uh, we are looking for uh, investments, five, 500K, for improve the app and global marketing. And also we are looking for partners from sports and wellness business. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Armin. That's wonderful. Um, sounds like you're tackling a, a really big issue in a great big market. Um, I had a question for you. How many have you had any uh, interview sessions with coaches uh, on, the, on the use or the need for this in within their I guess their their students of the sport? Yeah, sure. We we did we did a lot of. Um, customer development interview, around 70 interviews with parents and coaches and athletes too, athletes from 12 to 20 years old. It's like a teenage athlete. And um, yeah, and this technique which we choose was one of, one of the demanded technique in our uh, previous online course which we sell. But we use this technique manually. You know, not in the frame of mobile app. Okay. I have a couple more questions coming in for you, Armin. It seems like a good target would be college sports. How are you planning on getting the word out to them? Or have you done any market campaign networking to try to get them on your platform? Mm, thanks. Good question. Um, I'm not sure that it's only for college sports because they have... Uh, they, uh, Almost each college have a mental uh, mental health coach, but I don't know. Just, we need to test it. We didn't test it honestly. The okay. Okay, something to consider then. Yeah, it's a great idea. Okay, the next one is: Have you been able to get any sports celebrity endorsements? Could you repeat the question? Sorry. The, the question is, have you been able to get any sports celebrity endorsements, particularly in the tennis? Yeah, it's a great idea. We didn't attract the celebrities from sports. And uh, I want to attract Serena Williams or, Serena Williams or Maria Sharapova, if you can know them. <laughs> but yeah, it's our dream. But it's not the main goal for us now. The main goal for us is to check the, our hypothesis about okay. How it will be work? How it will work? Okay, so there's still a lot of testing to do before you launch your MVP in June. Um, and and did you say on your slide? Remind me if I missed that that you had some, some people that are willing to either beta, be a free beta users, or are they willing to be paid beta users? Uh, sorry, repeat again. Yeah. Back on your launch on your launch roadmap. Oh, okay. Talk about, talk about um, who, who you are expecting in June. You said you have 30 paid users. Okay, so those are ready to go. Gotcha. Uh, we have a customer base. It's a parent whose uh, kids play tennis. Around 10,000 parents. 
it's a customer base of our clinical colleagues. First, the second is uh, uh, second research is uh, uh, Facebook and and Instagram advertising. We did some tests and figure out that it costs for us around three dollars per lead from Facebook. Yeah, we start from this from our close network. Okay, that's great. One more question um, that we have for you, Armin, is what can the One Million Cups community do for you? Um, I think two things. Uh, the first one, it's um, connections uh, with uh, investors, maybe angel investors, or connect the second thing, or connections with the partners from sports and wellness business, you know, we are looking for uh, to this box. And your advice is for sure. That's wonderful. Okay, thanks so much, Armin. Everyone who uh, was able to tune in today, thanks for joining us and for your feedback, for your questions. We will be having these recorded and being sharing sharing these on our social media platforms. David, look for David to share his and Armin to share his. There'll be contact information as well. Um, we're so thankful for you to, to join us this virtual way, Armin, and share what you're doing with Got It. And we wish you the best. Thanks so much. Thank and all of our viewers, thanks for joining us. We will be doing another virtual 1MC next Wednesday, starting at 9 a.m. So look forward to having you join us then. Have a great day. Great. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.